Let's talk about the U.S. and China. Let's talk about what the U.S. is accusing China of and what China is actually doing and why what China is actually doing is making the U.S. so upset. And the example I want to focus on is this. This is from the Laotian Times. It's from October 13th. So uh, by the time you watch this video, this will already have happened. Lao to receive first passenger train along Lao-China Railway on Friday. So this is the high-speed rail line that China has been building in Laos since 2016. It is finally completed, and they are going to deliver the first high-speed train to Lao this week as I'm recording this. Uh, let's go back and see some, uh, see, see some more details here. So this train is coming. There's going to be a second one they acquire. It's going to go into operation on December 2nd this year. And they will be focusing on freight traffic first and then tourist transportation later. And that's because of restrictions to travel related to COVID-19, not any sort of technical uh, problem or limitation. Construction of the historic railway linking the Lao capital of Vientiane to the Chinese border over a distance of 427 kilometers began in December 2016, linking five provinces together. The railway includes 198 kilometers of tunnels and will traverse 62 kilometers of bridges. It'll run from the Botan border gate connecting northern Lao to China down to Vientiane capital with an operating speed of 160 kilometers per hour, which is actually the, the maximum speed of the trains running in the United States. And when you see how difficult the terrain is in Lao, you, you will understand how impressive this all is, this entire project. Now, before this, Lao did not have a rail line of any kind moving people and goods across the country. They have a very symbolic little rail link from Thailand into Lao because the Lao capital of Vientiane is right on the Thai-Lao border. And so this is a major development. And before this, they had a highway that China had built. And what this did was take a three-day trip from Kuoming to Vientiane and cut it down to one day. And now the high-speed rail line will cut that trip down even further to less than a day. And what this does is open up all kinds of opportunities for tourism and for business, for exporting and importing and moving goods from China through Lao into the rest of Southeast Asia because this is the first leg of several. The next leg, which is already under construction, runs from Vientiane to Bangkok in Thailand. They already have a, a new grand central station built and ready to go. And when that line is completed, you are going to be able to go from Bangkok to Kuoming, China by high-speed train. It'll be, it'll be incredible. It'll transform the region. And so some of my viewers probably already understand why the US would have a huge problem with this. But in case you're not getting it yet, I will explain. Now, when I first went to Vientiane many, many years ago, it was a very dusty, almost like a town, not really a city. And there were even roads in the capital that weren't even paved. And I noticed all of these fake NGOs funded by the, U by the US government and Europe uh, bumping down these unpaved roads in their SUVs with their logos slapped on the side. And what were they doing? They were putting up banners saying things like, turn your lights off at night, don't, don't use too much electricity. Because what they were trying to do is encourage people in Laos to embrace poverty and just perpetual underdevelopment. They are there to give you the hope of development, but never actually deliver it. Here is China delivering it. Now, let's just take a look at, there's a video. I just want you to take a look. This is what China has physically built for Lao. Since 2016, they started and now it's finished. And this train is going through China right now on its way to Lao. This is what China has done for Lao. And this is in contrast to what the United States has claimed that they were doing for decades. It's, it's just like Afghanistan. They were there for 20 years. And what did they build? Absolutely nothing. And they were doing the same thing in all of these other countries that they claimed they were trying to aid in development. So you know, have US aid in almost every country, but there's no development going on. And is that because it's an impossible task that these people are just impoverished and poor and inferior and they just can't? 
pull themselves up? No, because China's doing it right now. They just did it in Lao. So, so it is possible. It's almost as if the U.S. is lying. It's almost as if they're not really interested in development. They're interested in filling up the space where real development should be taking place so that it doesn't happen. This is why the U.S. is upset with China. Now, if you are a country like the United States, the self-proclaimed leader of an international rules-based order, and you only represent 4% of the global population, how is it that you're going to subordinate the other 96% to you unless you delay, stop, or roll back real development? That's the only way you can do it. And that's what they've been doing since the end of World War II. Some people will argue convincingly that it started even before the world wars. And so that is what the US has been doing. And now China is upsetting this. China is upsetting this. China is one of several nations alongside Russia and some others who believe in multipolarism. This is where you don't have one country unilaterally deciding things for everybody else. You have a balance of power where there are checks and balances, uh, not on a piece of paper at the UN, but a real balance of power, a tangible balance of power where nations are being built up, where they have resources, they have wealth, they have a military and they're able to keep in check their neighbors and their neighbors are able to keep them in check. This is actually how a real balance of power can be established. And then with that balance of power, something like the UN could actually be meaningful because it won't be constantly hijacked by a single superpower acting unilaterally on the global stage. And so this is, this is why the US has a problem with high speed rail. Now it gets worse because it's not just them squatting on a country with their their fake NGOs, it's it's actually worse than that. So, I mean, you've probably heard the U.S. complaining about debt trap diplomacy. So, this is Voice of America, U.S. State Department media. Lao braces for promise peril of China's high speed railway. So, it's like the U.S. is always promising development, and they don't even have like a a made up project that they're promising you. It's always extremely abstract, like build back better world. They don't even have a single project that they can point to and say, it'll be like that. This is an actual project that China has finished building and they're, they're delivering an actual train to Lao right now. And they're saying, you know, th this is promising, but maybe also peril. And they'll talk about the view from China, landlocked to land linked I again, it was before they built that highway, it would take three days to move through Lao from Kuoming to get to the capital. And if you're a backpacker, it's a great trip. If you're trying to do business or you're just trying to go from A to B or you're trying to move goods, it is a complete nightmare. And this is what has been holding Lao back for decades. They are isolated, not because they don't like their neighbors, but because there's mountains and valleys and rivers everywhere. You saw how many tunnels and bridges this rail line involved. And so they're talking about that and then they're talking about risk and reward and then debt trap diplomacy. And here's the thing, Laos is an impoverished country. They invested in this high-speed rail link. This is going to connect them to the rest of Southeast Asia and also to the most populous country in the world, soon to have the largest economy in the world. This is going to enable economic growth within their country and enable them to pay this off. Of course, they can't pay it, pay it off now. That is how investments work. You take the risk, you invest in it, and then eventually it'll pay itself off. That's what a good investment should do. There's that, and then there's this. This is actually in Thailand. So I, I told you there's going to be another line that goes from Lao to Bangkok. So we've got this guy, Tanaton, Juan Grung Ruanket, that's him right there. He is the US backed billionaire opposition leader uh, who had put these mobs out in the streets, these Hong Kong style mobs out in the streets in Bangkok right now, trying to overthrow the government. So uh, why is the US backing him? Because he because he said he'll say things like this. Thailand needs hyperloop. Not China built high speed rail, Tanaton. And he's saying this because he, it, this is in 2018. He just got back from the United States. So he was, he was in the United States. He was in contact with people at the State Department. 
USAID, Freedom House, which is a subsidiary of the National Endowment for Democracy. And then he also went to the middle of the Nevada desert to look at this Hyperloop, which right now is a 500 meter test track, has not moved a single passenger from one point to another, and it won't for many years to come, if ever it does. And he's saying Thailand needs to dump this high-speed rail line being built already. It's already under construction. Even in 2018, it was already under construction. They need to d dump that in favor of this thing that will probably never even exist. That's what he's doing. So you see, he's doing the same thing those fake NGOs were doing in Laos and in, in Vientiane with their SUVs on the dirt roads. They were just pretending to drive development and pushing the country into the future when in reality they had every intention of arresting development or rolling it back if they could and so he's saying all of this and if you watch the video of him pitching this when he got back to thailand he he even said we need to we need to pivot away from china back to the u.s europe and japan and the question you have to ask yourself is what is the united states Europe or Japan, what are they building in Southeast Asia right now? China just built high-speed rail for Laos. You, you could see it with your eyes. In December 2nd, you might be able to buy a ticket to go ride on it. Uh, so what has the US, Europe, and Japan done for the region lately, and why should the region pivot back towards them? So again, China is building tangible infrastructure, raising impoverished countries up alongside them, helping build the infrastructure that is eventually going to raise the entire region up with China as it rises. China is poised to surpass the US and when it does, it'll be irreversible. And this is what they're racing against. And this is what's driving them to accuse China of being some sort of big threat to the world. They're not a big threat to the world. They're a big threat to the US's desire to have hegemony over the world. This is China balancing things out on the global stage and removing this element of impunity that the West has enjoyed for, you could probably say, centuries. I personally look forward to watching the Lao-China railway go into operation. I, I cannot wait to see the line finished from Kuoming all the way to Bangkok. I will be one of the first people riding on it. It's an incredibly exciting time to be alive to watch this taking shape but it's disturbing to see so many people buying into the notion that somehow this is bad and should be stopped or that we should put our faith in the u.s who has has built nothing for anyone even back in their own country and and yet somehow we should not do business with china and double down on ties with the united states it doesn't make any sense and it's scary that so many people are buying into this so this is why I continue to make videos and try to reach out to people. If you liked this video, if you thought it was useful, please help share it with other people. Show them this information. Show them what China is actually doing. They're not invading and encroaching, encroaching and expanding. They're building nations up by giving them infrastructure that the West for decades has denied them. That's what China is actually doing, and you can see it with your own eyes. Like and share the video. Uh, subscribe. It helps the channel grow. It's free to do. I would really appreciate that. In the video description below, I will put the links to these stories so that you can read them yourself. And I, there are also ways that you can help support my work. And to everyone who has been helping, whether it's through Patreon, a month to month, or one-time donations, or even if you're just one of the people helping share this work with others. I could not do this work without that help. Thank you so much, and as always, thank you for watching.